So we're, we're back starting talking about cooking. Um, let's, let's start over. So uh, Dad just assumed you knew how to cook. He assumed I knew how to cook. Continue. And I knew nothing about cooking, nothing. But for my wedding showers, I received, among other gifts, The Joy of Cooking and several other cookbooks. So I start opening my joy of cooking to see how to cook anything. And um, I really did not know about his persnickety taste. He had a very limited taste bud. And uh, he didn't like a lot of different foods. But uh, I don't recall my first shopping trip to the market. But there was a market down Fredericksburg Road, and that was the one I always went to to do my grocery shopping. And of course, in those days, we had butchers. We had a butcher counter who cut your meat for you and gave you bought your meat from him. And I had I didn't even know how to order meat or what kind of meat to get. I knew nothing. I knew how to play the piano, and that doesn't feed anybody very well. Um, so I uh, decided I'd fry a chicken, and I so I bought a chicken, but I didn't know you had to ask them to cut it up. You bought a chicken, okay. So I bought a chicken. I got home and opened it, and here's this whole chicken, and I thought, oh, I don't know what to do with it. Did it have the head, the neck, and all the? No, no, there? just a just the chicken. Just the the neck was gone, but I was so dumb. Oh, I was so ashamed to even talk about it. My aunt had never shown me how to cook. Um, so I looked at this whole bare skin chicken and I thought, I don't know what to do with it. I can't fry that whole piece. So I wrapped it up and I drove back to the market and I was so embarrassed and I handed it back to the butcher and I said, sir, I don't know what to do with this. I just got married. and." Would you cut it out for me? <laughs> he must have gone home that night laughing. Uh, so he cut it, cut it up for me, and after that I knew I had to ask to get my chicken yeah. cut up. But I learned to cook real good fried chicken. Mm -hmm. I, I learned to do that. I know you did. I was the beneficiary of that. Yeah. <laughs> and the first spaghetti I tried to make, I didn't realize you had to watch cooking the... Uh, I should have read the directions. <laughs> cooking the spaghetti in just a short time, and it was just mush. Oh, I, I I'd overcooked like it. Or yeah. I'd overcooked it. And then um, there happened to be a former Tucson boy that was my classmate in high school that Babe and I knew. And um, he was an officer, and he was stationed there with, with uh, his wife. So we got to be friends, and uh, his wife and I decided we would go down to the fish market that they had in San Antonio and buy lobster, and we'd fix a real yummy lobster dinner. Oh, boy. I don't know whether the lobsters were old or whether they were good, but the smell was just atrocious. We put them under the broiler, and that meal was a disaster. And it smell, well, Dad said to me very sweetly, he was always so kind. He said, honey, uh, please don't try to do lobster ever again. <laughs> well, he didn't like that kind of food anyway. Yeah. 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 And let's see, I made meatloaf from Joy of Cooking, and it was like eating a rock. It was so solid and hard. Uh, I don't know. Were you what, just not very good at following directions? I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I made a beautiful cake, my first cake. Oh, yeah. That's another story. My first cake. I uh, baked a lovely cake out of joy cooking. It turned out beautiful. And I made the icing. And it said, uh, uh, told, gave me the recipe for the icing. But I didn't know what powdered sugar was, so I just thought it was regular sugar. Uh, granulated sugar. So I like made, sand. made the icing out of granulated sugar, and it was like eating sand. Chocolate, yeah, chocolate-flavored sand. Oh, Frank, it was such a disaster. Now, was Dad cooking at all at this time? Well, 
he thought he could cook because he had watched his mother. And he was so cute. He never, you know, I, how did I ever get such a wonderful husband? All those years, well, it wasn't very long, but all that time trying to learn to cook before I got home and watched mom, he never criticized me one single time. And every meal that I cooked for him, he, he'd look at me and smile and say, thank you, honey, <laughs> and never criticized me. But we laughed about it years later. He said, it was so good that I had two meals at the base. <laughs> he said, that kept me from starving to death. No wonder you went to the officer's club for dinner a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, I know a lot of your cooking skills and prowess came from, you know, my grandmother. Dad. Oh, yeah. When, how did that happen? When did that start? In the well, I, we were married in June of 47. In February of 48, we were transferred to Tucson. And of course that meant we were near mom and dad. And um, so I was pregnant with Mike when we moved here. I was six months pregnant with him. And uh, mom and dad wanted us to move into the, one of their homes that they owned here on First Avenue. But they had to get the renter out and uh, do some remodeling and stuff. So we eventually were going to move into that house on First Avenue. And um, so until we did, they had us move into their house and live there until we moved into the First Avenue house. So I lived in their house and I just hung over them on the shoulder and watched her cook. And, and uh, that was a godsend. It was just, she was such a fabulous cook. And she was so easy to work with and so loving. She never criticized. She was so, and she loved me, and that helped. Well, you obviously learned well. Now, but this is the first I heard that Grandma and Grandpa owned other houses in Tucson. Yeah, they owned a house on First Avenue, and they owned a house just around the corner on Seventh Street. Oh. And they were both very much alike in their structure. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Dan Brewster had built both of them. Okay, so and Sadie's husband. So Grandpa had done some wise investing. And uh, well, I think he inherited them from from Pop. Oh, okay. And uh, Uncle Dan had built the house that, that they bought. Mm. So uh, they, Tom and Estelle moved in the one on Seventh Street, mm -hmm. and then we moved into the one on First Avenue. Mm -hmm. Did you pay rent? No. Interesting. They didn't want us to pay rent. Mm. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, so. Anything else about your first few months of marriage in Texas that you think is worth? Talking? I can remember something very naive and funny. As I say, we rented the, the one bedroom and shared the bathroom with Mammy Shaw's. And uh, I guess I must have been lonely, but I don't remember being lonely. One day, while Dad was at the base, I thought, well, I'll go around to that house right behind us there and introduce myself and see if they're friendly. Can you imagine? And um, so I went around, and uh, when the lady opened that door, I said, hello, I, I, I'm Avenel Johnson. I just live around the corner. And I said, oh, I mean, I'm Avenel Hawk. I had still hadn't gotten used to using my married name. And then Mammy was a good, uh, uh, faithful Methodist mm -hmm. attender. And she, they had ladies' aid in the Methodist Church, which was the uh, women's group. So uh, she found out that we were Methodists, and she, I dressed up with my hat and everything and went to ladies' aid with Mammy one day. And um, she, uh, she got very upset with us. She called uh, your dad my lieutenant. When she referred to Dad, it was always my lieutenant. And uh, she liked Dad so much. And um, she said, uh, you and my lieutenant need to be getting up early on Sunday morning and going to church. She said, you go out on Saturday night and you go dancing and you have a good time, but you come in so late that you don't go to church on Sunday. And I said, you know what, Mammy, you're right. But we never did anything about it until we got to Shreveport. And uh, so 
anyway, Mam Mammy always tried to take care of us. She took us over for dinner one night to her uh, uh, son's house, who was a surgeon, and her other, her daughter and husband were there, and uh, we had a nice evening there. She was very good to us. Did you sample the Mexican food in San Antonio? Do you remember? No. Um, there was a Christie's on Broadway, which was not very far from Burr Road, where we lived. There, there was a Christie's fish place where you could go and get uh, tasty, quick food. We'd go there. We'd go to the movies. Uh, most of our entertaining though, was with the fellow officers and their wives out of the base. Did you ever go to the Alamo? No. So, yeah, you, you that's right, because yeah, your dad's a gone all day long. You're not a mother yet, so you had yeah. lots of time on your hands. Yeah, I did. did, you do, what did, you, did you have a piano you could play at all? What? Did you have a piano you could play? No. Or, uh, uh, what did you do? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. Uh, isn't that funny? No, no, not funny at all. So I, <laughs> I would be surprised if you did. <laughs> uh, um, did you explore the San Antonio? Because I know you went to buy lobster, you go to the butcher. Were you, were you going out with the other wives to kind of? Uh, well, explore? I was getting together with Mary Lou. I forget what we were. Oh, Mary Lou was a San Antonio girl, mm -hmm. and uh, she was good friends with the former mayor's daughter. Okay. So we would go over there. Um, I don't remember that much about what I did. Uh, were you starting to play cards at all, play bridge or anything like that? Not then. Okay. Not then. Didn't start to play bridge until uh, later on in our marriage. Okay, well, so this kind of wraps up your sort of pre-nuptial to the first few months of your marriage. Okay, oh, go ahead. I remember something funny. Uh -huh. at, uh, when we were living at Mammy Shots, um, of course I'd buy, the, buy our food and put it in her refrigerator. That we had to share. I had to share a refrigerator. So one day, Dad bought himself some beer and put it in the refrigerator because I didn't drink when I got married. Um, but Dad had started having a beer once in a while with different foods. So he bought some beer and put it in the refrigerator. Well, her pastor came to see her, and um, uh, while he was visiting with her, she had gone into the some room to get something, and he said, uh, I'm thirsty, Mrs. Shaw, she, can I get a drink of water in your kitchen? She said, yes, there's some cold water in my refrigerator. So he went in and got some cold water from the refrigerator, and then she realized after he left that he had seen the beer at her refrigerator. She tore into Dad, <laughs> you do not ever bring beer into my house again and put it in my refrigerator. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine somebody talking to Dad like that. Well, she did. <laughs> you do not bring any beer into my house. And I was so embarrassed. My pastor came, and he went to my refrigerator, and he saw beer in my house. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, this, this wraps up kind of up to this point, and uh, starting next session, we'll, it'll be the beginning of your, your life as an Air Force wife. And uh, okay. all the excitement that brought. Yeah, well, I forgot to tell you about uh, Paul and Ronnie came to visit us while we were at, in San Antonio. And Paul Grimes and uh, Ronnie as well. They came on their honeymoon. Okay. Uh, am I still on? Yeah, I'm still on. Oh, yeah. Paul and Ronnie uh, were married on July 19th, the next month after we were married in Tucson. And my Uncle Maynard gave her away at the wedding because her father was dead. And uh, so in two months' time, he gave away two girls in weddings. <laughs> um, and they, w they went on their honeymoon to uh, Mankato, Minnesota, where, which was her hometown, to meet the rest of Ronnie's family. On the way back, they stopped in San Antonio and spent a weekend with us. And uh, Mammy ha and happened to be out of town that weekend. She gave us permission to let them stay in her bedroom, oh, that's nice. which was really nice. And they stayed with us. So we had a nice weekend with Paul and Ronnie. Oh, yeah. Well, as I said, next session we'll start your, your saga 
as an Air Force wife. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Love you. Love you more. No, you don't. <laughs>